Hello. I'm back again. I know. <laughs> I'm your hostess, back to the basics. Um, so I was researching and I happened to come upon Freedman's Bank. This bank was created in the, let me see, 1860s. So I'm going to read what this uh, sign says for all the listeners who are not, um, who are, are going to be, uh, who are listening and who are not uh, visually seeing what I have on the screen. Slavery denied African Americans the education and skills required to exercise the freedom won by the Civil War. To redress that, Congress created the Freedmen's Bureau and Freedmen's Bank in March 1865 in Richmond. The Bureau and its branch bank first operated out of two frame buildings here at 10th and Broad Streets, relocating several times before closing in 1872 and 1874, respectively. The agencies united families, legalized marriages, and provided education, food, clothing, job placement, legal, and other services to former slaves. The bureaus and banks' written records are among the earliest and most complete histories of African American heritage. I did go through a few pictures that shows a picture of Freedman Savings Bank. And also I found a picture that actually has a black man um, here in the picture. He's like sitting and then there's Freedman's Bank where he's uh, labeled where he's sitting at. And again, remember, this is the 1860s, so um, those of us who, you know, for those who know our history, you know, there's a lot of um, um, Black people were definitely depicted in a very dehumanizing um, way. But of course, in this picture, again, it's it's a black man and he looks like number one, a human being. And in this picture, in this photo, it says we need to bank black former slaves robbed of 66 million by U S backed banks. So again, I was researching a uh, Freeman's bank and I came across an article and I'm going to take, remove this photo from those who are, um, viewing this visually, and I blew up the article. It this article is um, from the actually it's actually uh, this article comes from the University of Chicago, and it was uh, let me see University of Chicago news article, and this was written on September eleventh, twenty twenty. So let me go over here. I blew it up as big as I could for those who are watching. And for those who are listening, I'm going to read it. Let me go back. Here we go. And I will definitely make sure I have the link in the description box. Why a 19th century bank failure still matters. University of Chicago News. The article, as we see, dated September 11th, 2020. Chicago Booth study links Black distrust of financial institutions to Freedman's bank collapse. In 
In 1865, Congress set up a bank for newly emancipated Black Americans to help accelerate their economic empowerment. Notice the terms used. Black Americans, not people of color and or anything else. The Freedmen's Savings and Trust Company opened in New York, built headquarters in Washington, D.C., and established 37 more branches in quick succession across 17 states. It seems likely that the collapse of the Freedmen's Bank and the loss of savings has contributed to an intergenerational mistrust of banks, Yanellis said. And here in my thought bubble, I put credit unions are another option, perhaps black credit unions. Just a thought. Finding new opportunity. An assistant professor at the Booth School of Business and an expert in household finance, um, talking about Professor uh, Yanellis, visited the U.S. Treasury in fall 2018, but was rerouted from the main interest due to a temporary security issue. Mm. On his detour, he came upon an annex that two years earlier had been renamed the Freedmen's Bank Building. Yanellis looked it up. So again, this is what happens when we get rerouted. <laughs> In her 2017 book, The Color of Money, Black Banks and the Racial Wealth Gap, legal scholar uh, Mezra Baradaran explains how the government originally proposed distributing land to people who had been enslaved but faced a violent backlash from Southern whites. Again, this is exactly why I highlighted this. Now, now, now notice how the government originally proposed distributing land to people who had been enslaved but faced a violent backlash from Southern whites. Mm. Which, by the way, um, the Dixie uh, Democratic Party, yeah, them people. And I'm not even going to get into the other party. As, as far as I'm concerned, both parties are pretty much trash. Back to the article. Instead of land, freed slaves got rights that they could not use due to their economic and political status at the bottom rung of society rights. Of course, legal scholar. Baradaran, a law professor at the University of California, Irwin, or Irvine. They also got a savings bank, which was another form of diversion that will be repeated in the next century. Now, for those who are reading, who are watching this, or who are listening, this is one of the most important paragraphs of this Universal uh, article taken from the University of Chicago. Because now we have legal scholars saying, hey, <laughs> the government originally proposed to distribute land, but then they 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 got some, you know, pushback from Southern whites. And. This led to, OK. You got rights, but eh. You can't, you don't really use, you know, you can't really use them. And as you can see that bottom rung of society for those who are watching. And then here we go. They also got a savings bank, which was another form of diversion that would be repeated in the next century. Interesting. Very interesting how it just seems history just it's just time is, again, circular, just the same thing over and over again. Back to the article. Customers could open an account with as little as five cents and receive interest on deposits of one dollar 
or more. Most deposits were small, less than $60 on average. More than 100,000 people became customers. And this included farmers, cooks, barbers, nurses, carpenters, likely saving some of their very first paychecks. In the bank's archives, Stein and Professor Yanella saw an opportunity to study the effects of financial inclusion. Previous research had examined su- such effects in developing countries, but the Freedmen's Bank records offered a trove of data about Black Americans who essentially gained access to a financial institution overnight. Because branches opened at different times, it was possible to isolate effects in individual communities. So again, Professor Stein and Yanellis. Now, again, there's data to see um, how and if Freedmen's Bank um, was effective and whether or not it impacted Black Americans. Stein and Yanellis analyzed surviving account registered records that have been microfilmed by the National Archives and later digitized in CD ROM format by Family Search, a nonprofit genealogy association. They obtained data from 107,197 accounts across 27 Freedmen's Bank branches. After also accounting for family members who lived with an account holder, they totaled 483,082 individuals, roughly 12% of the Black population in the American South in 1870. They then lined their records up with a sample from the 1870 census containing information on schooling, literacy, employment, and wealth among Black Americans. You see, this is how you do thorough research. First of all, are the resources valid and reliable? And then you do what? What what did they do? They lined it up with the 1870 census, so they cross-referenced. Let me let me get back to the article. The Freedmen's Bank, they determined, had a small but su- significant impact on the economic well-being and outlook of its account holders. Individuals and households with an account were one percent were one percentage point more likely to be literate and to attend schools. The same individuals were two percentage points more likely to work and to have higher incomes than their peers. So again, this bank had a positive impact on Black Americans. And I just put Black Banks Matter. Having an account may have allowed individuals to save to make large purchases, such as a plot of land, to invest in workers or to open a business. It also may have helped them overcome challenges associated with irregular income and shocks, often tied to fickle agricultural harvests by providing a place to make consistent recurring payments and save up a cash cushion. The researchers found that those effects did not extend to white households near bank branches, nor to people who live close to planned but never open branches. They also found larger effects for people who opened accounts earlier than people who started banking later. Because it offered financial services to an unbanked population, the Freedmen's Bank had real impact for Black American individuals and households. By examining County level eh, by examining county level level vote shares in the 1868 congressional elections, Stein and Yanellis found corroborative evidence that the mere presence of a bank branch drove better school attendance, higher literacy, 
and property value and more employment and income. That's a very powerful statement. That the mere presence of a bank branch drove better school attendance, higher literacy, and property value, and more employment and income. And mind you, the very things that I just said are all solutions to, you know, our... um, or problems. Now, as far as school, yes, de- depending upon what school it is, yes, that does matter. Um, higher literacy, reading is important. An individual can take many journeys. in their mind just by reading. And then we see property value and more employment and income. So now we're talking about economics. It seems likely that the collapse of the Freedmen's Bank and the loss of savings has contributed to an intergenerational mistrust of banks. This was a quote by Assistant Professor Constantine Yanellis, who again was doing research with another professor, Professor Stein. Okay, now we're getting to lasting mistrust. The Freedmen's Bank did not last. Despite being founded as an institution dedicated to savings, the bank soon invested its depositors' hard-earned money into risky railroad companies and real estate. Now, I am going to go off on a little rant, just a little one now. At the time, picture this now, 1860s. You know, railroad, you know, industrial, you know, The cotton gin, you know, different things like that was going on. But what about these railroads and real estate? Who was, who was, who was a part of that? So this is what happened when we make risky investments. Because at the time, Who were some of the big players in the railroad companies? Oh, the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and all them folk. And then we know about, you know, the J.P. Morgan and his family. You know, Chase Bank, CD and all and, and all that that we have now today. Mm-hmm. The Fords. We can go, we can go all the way through these families. But anyway, let me get back to the article. Its coffers were largely co-opted by the First National Bank, which offloaded its liabilities onto the Freedmen's Bank's books with no objection from the latter's all-white trustees. Now, I know what you're probably saying, well, back to the basics. Like, what? what like, what? 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 Why are are you doing material on Freedmen's Bank? Because you see, this is this has happened before. This is what happens when we pay attention to history. Remember two thousand eight? Anybody? Huh? Remember? Remember when oil in July 20, 2008 hit an all-time high of $147 a barrel? And then what happened September 29th, 2008? The market lost over 700 points in one day. 
too big to fail. Remember? And, 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 and who got bailed out? Huh? Who, who, who bailed out, um, um, Goldman Sachs? Who bailed out Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, AIG? Exactly. Main Street. The American people bailed out these big banks. And that's why I put in this bubble. Remember 2008, Too Big to Fail? And we bailed out the banks, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, AIG, Goldman Sachs. We paid their damn bill. Remember? And when you look back at this at this paragraph that I just read from the Freedmen's Bank, look what, what happened. The bank soon invested its depositors' hard-earned money into risky railroad companies and real estate. Its coffers were largely co-opted by the First National Bank, who which offloaded its liabilities onto the Freedmen's Bank books with no objection from the latter's all-white trustees. Because you see, they wanted the bank to fail. But now you fast forward to 2008 and we bailed the banks out. You see what I'm saying? But yet these are the same people who have the nerve to say, oh, well, you guys don't work hard enough and you guys are lazy. Excuse me. We paid your damn bill. These elites, that, that's why, you know what? I'm so glad. Uh, I am what I am and I'm and, and I am where I'm at because the, these elite people, these Rothschilds and these and these Rockefellers and all these people. Now, I'm going to get back to the article, but y'all know how I do. Y'all know how, how I go on these rants. Just just bear with me now. Stay stay with me. We're just taking a little journey. But these people have the nerve. To call themselves the owners and, oh, you know, we have to rule over, uh, um, you know, the populace because you see the populace, you know, they can't think for themselves. And, you know, we must we must um, we must rule over them. Newsflash. There is no ruling class without an underclass. And I know what some of you may be thinking, like, okay, back to the basics, like get to the point. Okay, the point is they, the elite, need us. That's the point that I'm trying to make. They need us. You can't talk about, oh, I'm ruling and then you don't have a, you don't have an underclass. There is no ruling class without an underclass. It's simple. This is why this is back to the basics. This, this is not no, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? No, uh, uh, um, you know, marine biology, you know, nothing that's really, you know, neuroscience and all this other very highly sophisticated, uh, you know, uh, 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 li literature or material. They need us. It's simple. We bailed them out, but then they had the nerve to insult us by talking about, oh, we lazy. We, then the American people are not, we, we and particularly black people, shoot, we're some of the hardest workers in the workplace. Ain't nobody lazy around here. We literally bailed y'all out in 2008. Remember? But again, it just, I just had to make that comparison because, it, again, what happened in 2008 has been happening for pretty much centuries. All these things going on with our economy. Look, remember, this, this whole paragraph should be insight that this is what these people wanted. 
Let me keep going on. And here we go. See, that was a perfect segue to the next paragraph of, of this article. The panic of 1873 was a death knell as real estate prices fell, loans went bad, and depositors demanded their money back. Isn't that what happened in 2008? Mm-hmm. Social reformer Frederick Douglass was elected the bank's president in a bid to save it, but he quickly became aware of the bank's dire, dire conditions and turned to Congress. On June 29, 1874, trustees voted to, sh to, to shutter the bank, leaving more than 60,000 depositors with nearly $3 million in losses. The Freedmen's Bank headquarters were torn down in 1899, replaced in 1990, excuse me, replaced in 1919, excuse me, by what would become the Treasury Annex. Now, now you see what these demons did? Oh, I'm going in today. You see what these demons did? Now, they already had no ob objection taking on all of these liabilities of this first national bank. And then they voted to, of course, close the bank's doors. But look that that left three million dollars in losses. But then some of y'all have the nerve to be on here talking about, oh, to not even. uh push for reparations. Excuse me. Maybe you're okay with uh, this type of behavior, but I am not. Some of us are not. No. Ain't nobody just going to turn. I'm not going to turn a blind eye to, to this. And mind you, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to wait on, you know, w wait on reparations with, with my handout. Absolutely not. I'm going to keep right on grinding. Ain't nobody going to be sitting still waiting over here, waiting on something that most likely will not happen. But that doesn't mean that we should not demand it. Should we not demand it? And then another thing, and then I'm going to move to the next paragraph. Look what they did. They tore down the headquarters in 1899. They didn't want us to know about Freedmen's Bank. This is what these people do. They do their dirt, and then they have the nerve to attempt to hide it by tearing down a historic you know a pretty much an 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 historical site these people want to rewrite history and everything else this, this is ridiculous Let me start running my ticker across here. Let me start running my ticker. Let me let me let me change up on my banner. Excuse me. I'm going to read this and then we're probably going to take a short break. I know that y'all y'all be like, man, you be talking too much, eh? It is what it is. I like to break stuff down. None of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense, and or any other military branch, element, or government entity. Again, none of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense, 
and or any other military branch, element, or government entity. And with that, we're going to take a short break because I've been talking for a minute and then we're going to get to what we need to get to and then we're going to conclude. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure that you hit the like button and that you subscribe. Hit the notification bell. It will be most appreciated. Let me take this short break. All right, so we're going to go right back into the article. Okay, while opening Freedman's Bank's branches seemed to have generated positive effects, closing them generated negative ones. If the government and the philanthropist's purpose was to teach the freed slaves thrift and responsibility, the lesson they actually learned was to distrust the government and philanthropists. Um, bar, yeah. Yeah, rights in the color of money. You try not to mess up people's names. My question is, should we trust the government and philanthropists? And of course, I shouldn't have answered my own question, but I did. I pretty much said, no, let's think for ourselves. The research by Stein, uh, Professor Stein and Professor uh, Yanellis, further bolsters the argument that the Freedmen's Bank failure did long-term damage to financial trust. When they look specifically at counties that once had a Freedman's Bank branch, using data from the 2017 Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation's National Survey of unbanked and underbanked households, they found that Black residents are more likely to list mistrust of financial institutions as a reason for being unbanked, an association that is not present for white Americans, Professor Yanella said. Well, of course, I mean, if history, if this is what happened historically, I mean, why would we trust uh, financial institutions? Chicago boosts Richard Hornbeck and Louisiana State University's Danielle Keniston are also studying the Freedmen's Bank, exploring how its collapse, including the funds lost by depositors, affected depositor households and their descendants. This may also provide some insight into how African-American families would have fared differently if those particular families had received some financial transfers in, in the immediate aftermath of slavery, said Hornbeck. An economic historian and applied microeconomics who serves as the V. Dwayne Rath Professor at Chicago Booth. Forgive me for mispronouncing. Hornbeck. Okay, so Professor Hornbeck and Professor Keniston are merging several data sets that record how much money people had deposited in the Freedmen's Bank at the time of its collapse and what each family was reimbursed over the following decades. The researchers are tracking depositors in the Freedmen's Bank and their descendants from 1870 through 1940. The most recently, the, eh, the most recently 
publicly available full census data. This project is ongoing. So, and then this is the end of the article. So here's my thing. And maybe this is just me. As far as HR 40, we don't need any more studies. We already have Professor Hornbeck and Professor Keniston and many others who are already, again, who are already researching about right now into the Freedmen's Bank. Those two professors in particular are researching. And now it's not just about the uh, depositors who lost their money in 18, you know, in the 1870s. Now they're, they're following their descendants to see, okay, how did that affect their descendants? So we already have studies um, th that are being conducted. And as you see that last sentence, this project is ongoing. So HR 40, we don't need any more studies. And pretty much in my, in my quote, I pretty much said, cut the check and, and give me my land. Like cut the check, cut our check and give us our land. We don't need, we don't need any more studies at this point. We don't. We don't, we, we really don't need any more studies. Yeah, just, yeah, we're coming for our check. And for those who may say, oh, well, we, we shouldn't even demand it because we won't get it. That's not the point. It, whether or not we get it or not, who's to say? Now, logically, are they going to want to give us reparations? No, of course not. Would happen? Most likely not. But that doesn't mean that we don't demand it. We're coming for our check. That's what Martin Luther King Jr. said. I mean, wh wh why not demand it? In the beginning, um, I had put something on the screen and I will now read it. A dollar circulates in Asian communities for a month. A dollar circulates in Jewish communities for, uh, this says 20 days, about three weeks. A dollar circulates in black communities for six hours. Now think about that. I will say this, that black dollars matter. I am going to stop sharing the screen at this point because the article is done, but black dollars matter. Everything mentioned in that article matters. School matters. Now where, you know, our children are educated, that, that matters. First of all, education begins in the home. It does. Reading matters. This is nothing new. For those who are, you know, who had parents who were, you know, Black Panthers, a part of the Black Panther Party. Yeah, re reading was required. Oh, no, reading was not optional. Oh, no, you're going to read at least two hours a day, at least. 
You're not getting out of reading. As far as um, businesses, businesses matter. Education, reading, business, black businesses, that matters. How we spend our money matters. But I just wanted to go down memory lane and talk a little bit about Freeman's Bank. And remember what the article said, just the presence of the bank had a positive impact on what? School, literacy, reading, as far as income, even property values, it, even with, with the presence of the bank, even had a positive impact on property values. Let's not forget about Freedman's Bank. And let's continue to push for reparations. And with that being said, I'm your host, Back to the Basics. Um, I love you as a sister. I think that's important that we remember and not forget. And how did I come across Freedman's Bank? <laughs> I was researching and reading. <laughs> I'm going to say this one last time. As the ticker is running. For those who are listening and who are not seeing the visual, none of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense, and or any other military branch, element, or government entity. I, I encourage everyone listening or watching to think for themselves. I'm not a cult leader. That is not what I do. Think for yourself. The... Uh, the sources will be in the description box. And with that being said, I'm about to play this music. I thank everyone for watching and for listening thus far. It's most appreciated. And I just hope that everyone is doing well and that everybody stays safe out there. Hold on now. We just went right to techno. Hold on just a second. That was not what I wanted to play. This is what I wanted to play. Let me see if this one comes up. 